Hey everybody, Tony D with another Holly Woke Hot Take. And this one is about Chelsea Handler uh, retweeting Louis Farrakhan, of all people. Now for those of you who don't know, Louis Farrakhan's the leader of the Nation of Islam, and over the years he said some pretty anti-Semitic stuff. Um, so you would think anybody in Hollywood would avoid talking about that guy like the plague. But Chelsea Handler felt the need to retweet one of his speeches. I don't think there was anything anti-Semitic in that particular speech, but I mean, the guy does have a pretty long rep of saying stuff that's pretty not good. Um, now, libertarians would say, hey, you know, we're all about free speech, let people say what they want. But the problem is people aren't held to the same standard. And while Chelsea Handler is kind of getting the business now for retweeting that, you know, it wasn't very long ago, Snoop Dogg uh, came out in defense of Louis Farrakhan. And uh, I think on Facebook, when they took down, I think they took down Farrakhan's Facebook page or something. And uh, again, Libertarians would say, just let everybody use the platform, who cares? But if you're going to hold Chelsea Handler to this uh, imagined standard of, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't repost an anti-Semite, well, then you have to hold someone like Snoop Dogg, another celebrity, and say, hey, that guy's anti-Semitic. Thing is, Chelsea Handler will probably fold like a house of cards, uh, where Snoop Dogg will say, F you. And then, then what do you do, right? You know, Snoop Dogg's going to stand up for himself, whereas Chelsea Handler's kind of not. Snoop Dogg won't get the same sort of uh, attacks as Chelsea Handler. They'll, they'll be treated completely different. And this is another, yet another in a long line of things that's hypocrisy in Hollywood and in the culture at large. So, uh, the interesting thing about all this is anti-Semitic things have been happening more and more on the left side of politics. And this mirrors what happened in the UK. And I've talked about the UK many times about what happened to the Labour Party. The Labour Party, uh, right before the election, had a huge problem with anti-Semitic comments. Um, they had to have, um, uh, what's his face? The commie guy, what the heck's his name? Ah, I've forgotten his name. But the, he's not the leader anymore, but he was the leader of the lab. Jeremy Corbyn, I couldn't think of his name. So Corbyn had to come out and make this big statement. And, you know, he's not, uh, to his credit, he's a communist, but he's not an anti-Semite. And uh, his, his statement was pretty good on the subject. And it said, you know, this shouldn't be tolerated and whatnot. Um, but here in the United States, we had the problem with um, some of the squad saying things. We had uh, some of the women's march. Uh, that, that got caught up in some stuff. I think it was connected to Farrakhan, too. So uh, it's almost as if the left goes so far left, it starts hitting things that... The extreme right hit <laughs> and when I mean extreme right I mean extreme I don't I don't mean the definition of extreme right on Twitter which is anybody who's a Republican I mean like way out there wackos um, you know you know who I mean the, the, those the real racist guys and now we're seeing that on the left because the left, I mean, you push any ide ideology to the extreme, you start getting weird stuff. And with politics, you start getting increasingly racist. It's just that the people on the left are increasingly racist for different reasons. Um, like in the Chaz, you had segregated gardens. I mean, that's insane. Uh, you had reparations and... Uh, people being grouped and judged by their race as if everybody in a race or group should be judged by, uh, you know, as a monolith. And this is very bad. This is all very bad. And this is part of the reason that 
the extreme left can never get its act together. They don't have a uniform ideology that makes any sense. It is a mishmash of a bunch of ideologies that conflict with one another, and then you've got people, you know, trying to cobble it together and, you know, uh, being uh, hypocrites as they do it. Um, so there's no real answer here except to say to the people of Hollywood, you know, you take anything too far, this is the result. I mean, it's the natural result of taking things too far. The left side of politics has gone off a cliff. And if you can't see that, there's something very wrong with you. Something extremely wrong with you if you can't see that. You need to get out of your echo chambers. You need to get out of your ideological bubbles. You need to talk to normal people, uh, probably outside of Hollywood. And you need to get out of L.A. and California. Because that place is falling apart. And it's going to get worse. And uh, there are rumors that groups and protesters are now creeping up into the hills where these mansions are. And I know you rich people. You don't tolerate anything. You're going to call the police. You're going to demand that the police do something. And the police will be pressured to do something because you're rich. After a point. But you're going to have to pressure your local governments first to really get the police involved. And what you have to understand is you're now fighting a losing battle. This is inevitable. It's inevitable that one of these mobs is going to burst into a mansion and tear it down in the name of communism or whatever. Antifa would love it. So you need to get on board with moderate politics right now. Now, I'm not saying you should be Republicans or Democrats or whatever. I'm saying moderate, common-sense politics. And what that means is people who uh, peacefully protest are fine. People who riot go to jail. End of story. Throw them in jail. Uh, yes, you can have police reform. You're not going to get rid of the police unless you're going to allow everybody to carry a gun and hire private police, you know, uh, police and uh, do all that. Which I'm for, by the way. Uh, but you're going to have to uh, really loosen up those gun control restrictions and strap one on. Uh, and if you're not willing to do that, then don't, don't expect the police to come help you after you've, you know, let, hung them out to dry. Uh, and these protests are hanging the cops out to dry. Now, I'm the first one to tell you, you have to demilitarize the police because they're too, too much like the military these days. But that being said, um, you also have to take some of the nonsense off their plate. And number one with that, and I'll say it again, is you have to legalize drugs and prostitution. You have to. It's the only thing that's going to alleviate the pressure on cops, especially in the big cities. With all the money, the billions of dollars we spent on fighting drugs, it's done nothing. It's done nothing. Drugs are more illegal and profitable than ever. And the gangs couldn't be more dangerous. You legalize it, they fall to pieces. The money collapses. They can't have these armies. They won't be able to hire these people. The entire system breaks down. The organized crime system, the system we want to break down. Cops have less to deal with. And because of that, there's less guns, there's less violence. You legalize drugs and prostitution and then do a gun buyback, you'll buy back almost every gun on the street because they won't have a use for them. Why do people buy guns? It's either for protection or protection of your stash if you've got considerable stash and money. Without with legalized drugs and prostitution, all that money would be in the legal system. All that money would be taxed. All that money, well, it wouldn't even be that much money, really. You know how, pot, you know how much pot's going to cost if you legalize it? Very little. It's going to go down in price. It, it'll go way up in quality, and then they'll jack up the price more. But it, it, 
people will be growing pot like crazy. It'll be, it'll be hard to make a profit unless you got really, really good pot. As for the other drugs, just because you legalize them doesn't mean they're going to be in a vending machine. So think about it. You got to do something quick because these people are chanting, eat the rich out on Rodeo Drive. And they're kind of not kidding around. They kind of are, but they're kind of not. And they're, they're an unruly mob. They're an unruly mob. And those cops are sick of you looking down on them and calling, you, calling them racist. They're sick of it. So you better show some respect to those cops if you want them to come and save you. Um, and you better do it quick. Because if you rely on the Democrats who have been running your state into the ground for years, no, you gotta you gotta stand up and force them to do these things. You gotta force them. You gotta really threaten to throw your money to the Republicans. And yes, I'm serious. You need another choice. If you don't make a serious threat not to vote for these people, they'll do nothing. They love to do nothing. They have done nothing. Do something now, Hollywood, or see it all burn.